to get back to this position and be sitting up there. Um, just talk to me about how it feels to, to be just days out from the big fight. Has it though? Has it been my coyest? You know, honestly, since the loss, I've been just focusing on the journey, focusing on just taking each fight as it is. And uh, I was enjoying it. I wasn't thinking of like, I can't wait to, like I have to get back to that title shot. I have to get, that's why um, throughout the procedure, it was um, people were asking me, you don't want that title shot? Or they're saying, you don't want it? No, I did want it. It's just, there wasn't something that was, I was fixated on. I was, I was working on things. I was working on myself. I was working on the game. And I was enjoying the process. So, uh, and I know all roads lead, uh, lead to Rome sort of thing, right? So as, as long as I'm winning and getting better and enjoying it, I'll, I'll get here eventually. And I guess, how do you think the Robert Whitaker sitting up there compares to the one that sat at a press conference uh, when you guys fought the first time? This one's much happier, right? This one's much, I'm just enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I, I, I feel, yeah, I'm a much happier person. Like, uh, you know, I, 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 I realized that if I didn't enjoy the process and the road that led me here, I was you know, not enjoying half my life because I spent a lot of time training and, and fighting and in fight weeks. So, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's just, it's a job, you know, and, and I'm enjoying it. Do you feel like that first fight was uh, more of a, was, was it more of a mental thing that, that things played out the way it was, or do you think that it was uh, more physical stuff you could have done differently in the cage? A bit of both. You know, one affects the other, really. Uh, it, there were a lot of mental things, I think, you know, I, I got sorted post-fight, but I, that I couldn't quite deal with until I had that L. But, um, you know, and, and, and those mental changes stimulated the physical changes that I've made in the, in the game and in myself. I guess when you watch that fight back, I mean, what, what sticks out to you? Is there something specific like, oh, you know, I can change this going forward? And, and was there some big takeaway that you, you felt like went really went really wrong? Yeah, probably keep my hands up a little while. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know, there's, there's too many, there's too many. It's, uh, it's one of those things that I could, I could sit there and dissect it forever. But uh, at the end of the day, all I can try and do is just get better holistically and try to just go into this fight and give another dig. You keep talking about positivity and, and the mental change that came with that loss. I, I guess, what was the biggest thing for you, like, was it, did you work with somebody, kind of a, you know, a, a sports psychologist? Was it just some sort of deep dig within yourself to kind of come to that realization? Yeah, well, straight on, fortunately, I'm a bit of a thinker. <laughs> Sometimes, unfortunately, because I think too much. But uh, after, after that loss, I, like everyone knows, I took a step to the side of the game and uh, focused on myself. I did speak to a sports psychologist um, and we just, I don't know, you know, just, just ask the questions. And a last one for me, kind of being here in Houston uh, versus back home where, you know, it was maybe a more of a localized deal, is, is this, uh, do you feel like there's a little bit less pressure? Do you like kind of it being more of a business trip maybe, so to speak? I think the pressure was self-imposed. I, I think, I don't think the location played as much of a role as people think it did because I'm much more equipped to deal with all those sort of things. Uh, I think back home I was just, I was putting that sort of pressure on myself and those expectations on myself and uh, that was the, the biggest thing, you know, it, it resulting in a lot of pressure. Robert, uh, a lot of what you're saying uh, sound, sounds like what Brian Ortega was saying when he fought on Fight Island. Uh, he said, and he remembers a specific moment after he lost to Max Holloway, it was on the gurney going to the hospital is when he had this like bolt of light and hit him that he needed to make changes in his life. Was there a moment like that for you where you it just all hit you like, I need to make these changes in life and take a step back? No, uh, it wasn't. I didn't understand that. Sorry. <laughs> 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 I don't know why that went on. Um, um, yeah, no, it, it wasn't a bolt of lighting, lightning. After the fire, I was just burnt out. I just didn't want to. I didn't want to get back in the gym, you know, and uh, if, you can't, if you don't go in the gym, you're not going to be fighting very long. <laughs> so uh, I guess that was, I, I kind of recognised the signs. Like, I was like, uh, I, I didn't want to jump back in the gym. I wasn't enjoying the game. And uh, I had to sort that out because I wasn't going to drag my feet. This game is too dangerous. This game takes too much out of you to, to go at it like that. So I, I had to, to work it out.
Now, you, I watched an interview you gave with Mike Heck and you used the phrase, you had to come to grips with what the title meant when you had it. Uh, can you elaborate on what you meant by that? I don't know, I don't remember saying that. <laughs> <laughs> so when was this? Uh, I think last week you gave the interview. Uh, you were just talking about like you felt unsatisfied in this time moving forward when you do get the bell, it will be it will be different because last time you had to like come to, you were talking about how you had to like rise up the ranks and you enjoyed that process, but once you got the title, you kind of had to come to grips with what that meant. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, was, it, was, it was kind of working out my drives. So I, I like I liked video games a lot, and I really, really enjoy progression. And uh, it, sits, it sits really well with me, you know, being eight and fight seven and moving to six. Like, I don't know, I like that little dynamic, whatever it is. That's not saying I want to go back down to the rankings and work my way back up. But, uh, you know, it, it gives you a real easy sense of progression like you know where you're going whereas once once you hit the top i kind of didn't have that and i don't think it's hard to say i don't know how much of that annoyed me or whatnot but i, I do think the something had to change at that point something had to change like the, the drive or the satisfaction in the process something had to change and the change was not made before that fight Finally, uh, was it? Did we see it was your daughter's birthday? Um, in bed, you were like FaceTiming someone. Yeah, yeah, it was her. Yeah, it was her. It was her birthday. So she enjoyed it. <laughs> so before I left, we we celebrated her birthday then, because she was three turning four. She she didn't realize it wasn't her actual birthday, right? Three four year. <laughs> so so we 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 changed it. <laughs> we changed her birthday, and then we were telling my wife, like my wife, I was telling my wife like, don't tell her. Happy birthday again, otherwise she's gonna think she has two now. And she did anyway, so now she has two birthdays and that's how it is. Like, <laughs> like good little girls, you know? Might come back to bite you next year then, right? Yeah, it'll bite me for the next 50 years. <laughs> uh, Rob, you said you've set yourself free from fear or doubt. What have you done differently in this build up and how has your week been here in Houston? <laughs> when, when did I say that? <laughs> oh, probably last week in another interview. Yeah, I, I, did I say fear? I feel like, did I say fear? I'm not scared. <laughs> Doubt maybe. Uh, I don't know if saying that either. What are we doing with these idiots? <laughs> uh, I guess, you know, I guess moving forward, the, you take confidence in the training, in the camp, and the work's been done. I have great confidence in the work that I've put in. And that alleviates any doubt that I have moving into this fight. Uh, I, know, I know what's waiting for me after the fight, regardless of the win or loss. And, you know, I know why I fight. I know what drives me. And I'm, I'm very satisfied. I just want to get in there, make a very good account of myself. And, uh, you know, if I get in there and I execute my game and I do everything that I work towards and I give the best performance that I can give, then yeah, I'll be happy, man. And what will you do differently this time, and how important will patience be? Uh, well, the delving secret territory there. Oh, honestly, it's, it's hard to say. It depends how the fight plays out. Who knows, because he, a fight is so dynamic. He's trying to actively stop whatever it is I'm working on, and I'm doing the same, you know? We're both trying to execute our own game plans. I guess I'd like to hit him a lot. <laughs> if I can get him on his back, that'd be a good thing as well. But uh, we'll see how the fight goes. Hi, Rob, over here. Uh, we know that you're a big fan of video games. You were a voice companion in Skyrim. Uh, yeah. You're a big Fallout fan as well. When can we see you in the world of Fallout? <laughs> I have to wait for someone to make a mod of me in that one. Um, yeah, it was unbelievable to become uh, a character in, in a game that I spent so much time on. Even this week, I've jumped back into an adventure just to, to, to fool around in. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of laughs. It's, 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 yeah, it's a big thing. Mm -hmm. And another one for me, uh, from Fallout, you're a big fan. What's your favorite 50 song from Fallout? Ain't that a kick in the head? Oh, it's a good one. <laughs> hey, Robert, just over here. Um, what's it been like training with Johnny Lewis? Um, did you bring him in for anything specific, for example, is his counter striking? Oh, he's just got a good head for the game. You know, he's, he's nurtured so many champions. He's just got an aura of confidence and... Confidence and... Oh, I don't know. 
he's just got he's got an aura around him. His personality is contagious, and to to work in that environment and to to have him mentoring and um, giving feedback, giving tips on on how to change things just by the slightest margin to get so much more out of it. Yeah, it's I've I've had a lot of good work this this, this camp. Did you bring him with you? No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't. Ran, ran out of out of corners. Ran out of corners. But um, plus, I don't think he likes travelling too much now. You know, it's one of those things. Right, one more. Uh, what do you make of uh, Josh Emmett? People want to change his nickname to the Fighting Falmer after Skyrim. Say this again. Josh Emmett fans want to change his nickname to the Fighting Falmer based off of the Skyrim okay. character. <laughs> the little yeah. deformed elf. The blind goblin. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why do they want to do that? I guess they think he looks like a fool. Fans are ruthless, aren't they? <laughs> Seem to appreciate it. It's, it's like people on Reddit want him to change. Yeah, that, that's. <laughs> I'm happy I got called Bobby Knuckles, right? Rob, uh, <laughs> that is good. Rob, he said that uh, this week that in his last two fights he got bored uh, with Victoria and Young. Do you think there's any chance he gets bored against you on the weekend? I hope not. No, if he does, I'm doing things wrong. Um, that's a very easy thing to say though, isn't it? If, yeah. And can I ask, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about the improvements that you've made you know, since the two of you last fight, but given that you've spoken about, you know, everything you were going through and the burnout and stuff like that, do you feel like the, the, the gap between the two of you or the difference between the two of you as fighters has always been a lot closer, perhaps, than what that first fight suggests? Perhaps. You know, it's, it's one of those things. I'm not taking anything away from his, from his win. You know, he, he beat me quite handedly. It's... Um, it's one of those things that I, I think as a fighter who loses, you always feel like you can do better. And uh, that, was a, that was especially present in that fight. I felt like I could do better. And I feel, like I said before, I said that um, if I get in there and give a good account of myself and give my best, my best performance, I'll leave happy. And I feel like I did not do that in that fight. And I think our skill levels are much closer than, than that first fight dictated, but I don't know, I lost, so I can't really comment too much on it. Maybe they're not. <laughs> you know, I guess we'll wait for this second fight to, to find out. But uh, one thing I do know though is I've worked my absolute butt off to, to get here and to, to get in there and to give them a much, much better show than the first one. Are you happier that it's it's taken? Because it's obviously taken a while for you to get the, the rematch. Do you, are you happier than, than, say, if you hadn't have t tried to take that break, perhaps, and, and tried to, to have a rematch quicker or, or push to fight him again quicker? I couldn't fight him, like, I, I couldn't rematch him straight away. I had too many things to work on. And more so, just personally, I, had, I had things to work on. And uh, that took precedence over everything. I, I left the game for a bit, you know. And so that took precedence. But, um, I guess I haven't. If I, if, I, if I could go back in time, I wouldn't plan this amount of time before the title shot. I certainly would have fought last year, hopefully. You know, it's one of those things that just kept me pushed back. But it is what it is, and here we are.